Amen. Would you join me in prayer? It's been a few moments now in, in, in praise and thanksgiving to God. Spend a few moments in confession to God. And, and what that means is that uh, some of us are in here struggling with a sin and you need to bring that before the Lord. Others of us are struggling with the burden that it's, that it's, at, it's affecting our souls. And you need to offer that up to the Lord as a prayer of relinquishment. Now let's lift up our missionaries overseas, our IMB missionaries, also Missy Ward in Uganda. Pray for them as they, as they spread the gospel message in this challenging season of life. God would open doors. Now let's pray together as our Lord has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to invite Cassie and baby Angel to come and join me and whoever else would like to stand with Cassie. All right. Looks like Missy's coming. All right. I'm going to turn this way so everybody can see your baby. Church, this is baby Angel. Can you all say hi, baby Angel? He says hello with his eyes. Okay, uh, on your pew rows, you should have a, a sheet that looks like this. You may have to share with somebody around you. And we're going to do what's called a baby dedication. But Cassie, this is more of a uh, family dedication, okay? Uh, so Cassie, is it your desire to dedicate yourselves to partnering with this church, as well as your family and friends, to raise Angel in a home that strives to serve and honor the Lord? Yes. And church, is it your desire to enter covenant with Cassie and Angel? We enter to covenant with Cassie and Angel joyfully and willingly. Then what can we affirm about Angel? That Angel is a gift from God, created by God. That he will be unique in his personality and giftedness that we will teach him through words and deeds how to honor God in each other in covenant love. Baby Angel, Dr. Minardi has something to say to you. One, two, three, eyes on me. <laughs> yeah. You'll learn. Angel, as you grow in knowledge, may you seek godly wisdom, remembering that God willingly grants wisdom in abundance. As you grow in stature, may you grow strong, remembering that the joy of the Lord is your strength. As you grow spiritually, may your love for Jesus increase so that one day you will respond to the calling of Jesus on your life and place your faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And as a result of the relationship with Jesus, may others see Jesus 
in your words and in your actions and want to follow him as well. May God bless your life richly, sweet angel. Amen. The parents and congregation, through words and deeds, will you teach angel how God created the world as a beautiful gift to the first human beings and as a treasure to be enjoyed and guarded by us all? Will you teach him about the ancestors of our faith like Abraham and Sarah, Moses who was used of God to set the Israelites free, and Jesus the Messiah by whom we are set free from the bondage of sin? Will you teach him of God's good news that he lived among us, of his great sacrifice on the cross, and of the resurrection of Jesus the Messiah, and the sending of the Holy Spirit of God as another comforter? And do you now commit that we will raise day, uh, Angel to know that the prayers and faith of his family and church are foundational, but that the Holy Spirit will one day light the fire that leads to repentance, as Angel must place his own faith in Jesus. With the help of God, that is our commitment. So let it be. Angel, may God bless you and keep you. May God cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God turn his face towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, Cassie, we have a gift for you. We believe the Bible is foundational to life, and so we have Angel's first Bible. And it's a tiny testament. I love it. All right. And then this is a certificate of dedication to help you all to remember this day. Angel, these are your church family, and they're going to love you. All right. Good job. We're going to get it. <laughs> well, good morning, boys and girls. And nothing. All right, we're going to try this again. All right, I'm going to say good morning, boys and girls, and you're going to say good morning, Pastor Ray. Do you think you can do that? All right, good morning, boys and girls. Okay, can you do it a li just a little bit louder? Because I have a hard time hearing my right ear, okay? So we're going to try this again. Good morning, boys and girls. Okay, I heard you this time, but I know there's some hard of hearing folks out there, okay? Um, so we're going to try this one more time. Good morning, boys and girls. Oh, thank you all so much. Do you know what this is? No? Anybody know what this is? You got a guess? I got a guess. What's your guess? Yes, it is God. It's true. It is God. But what's God doing? What does it look like he's doing? Helping. He's helping. Okay. What, Catherine, what do you think? You don't know? Okay. Uh, what about you? He's helping? Yeah. How's he helping? What about you? He's baptizing? Kind of. Oh, he's washing feet. He's washing feet. Oh, well, I was, can you show everybody that face you just did, Dim? Yeah. Yeah. So, in, in, in when Jesus lived, they didn't have like nice boots like this or even Mickey Mouse Crocs like that, you know? Or Spider Man shoes either. Oh my gosh, those are awesome. Um, they didn't have shoes like that. They had sandals that they wore. And they didn't have great roads like they did. So what happens? Do you all ever know what happens when you walk down a dusty road with sandals? What happens to your feet? They get dirty. They get dirty. And so it's somebody's job to wash the feet like. of the disciples. Yeah, uh, of the people in the room. So do you guess, do you think it's the biggest person in the room's job or maybe the least person in the room's job to wash the feet? What do you think? Probably the least person in the room's job. But this is, who did who'd you say this was again? Oh, no, close. This is, this is Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus, and he's washing. 
he's washing the feet of a guy named, oh, let's not touch all of it. All right, but washing the feet of a guy named Peter. That's water. Yeah. That's, that is water. But it's actually olive wood. But uh, this is from Israel, by the way. Um, I know. So this is actually my favorite story from the Gospel of John. See, guys, it, you need to go potty. Oh, no. I, I bet we could take care of that. Uh, <laughs> it's probably that water that was right there. All right. Um, hey, Mook, I think Miss Martha's going to come with you. All right. All right. There you go, buddy. <laughs> there we go. All right. So, so this is my favorite story from Jesus' gospel. So with the, we're about to do Gospel of John the whole way through Easter. And we're going to have start off with this big, majestic passage. We're going to talk about Jesus as the word. He was with God at the beginning of creation and how powerful God is and how much light he is. But where we see God the most is when he's washing the feet of Peter and when he's on the cross. And he's dying out of love for us. And this is the image, I know, this is the image that God wants us to see and how God wants us to serve the world. All right, let's pray, guys. God, I thank you for these kids, and I thank you that you've given us the King of kings and the Lord of lords, but this king is a servant king. And I pray that we will learn from Jesus' example, Jesus' life of love, and that we would learn to serve others as well. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. All right, guys, you're going to follow Miss Ruth over here, okay? Thank you, Pastor Ray. Why don't you stand back up to your feet if you're able this morning, and if... Uh, You'll allow me a little uh, leeway this morning. Let me teach you a new song, at least a piece of a new song. You know, this morning we've uh, lit the first candle of Advent that symbolizes hope and the prophecies concerning the coming of Jesus. Here's one of those prophecies from Isaiah chapter 9. For a child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. The dominion will be vast, and its prosperity will never end. He will reign on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish and sustain it with justice and righteousness from now on and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Since the very beginning of the prophecies about Jesus, what Jesus would be called has been an important piece of our story. And for those of us who are followers of Jesus, to call on that name is foundational to our story. So let's celebrate the beauty of that name together. Let me teach you this chorus. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. And nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Having heard it, would you try and sing that with me again? What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. And nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. If you know these verses, why don't you sing this with me? You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation. Now revealed in you our Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. 
What a beautiful name it is And nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus You remember this one? Now come that long expected Jesus born to set thy people free from our fears and sins release us let us find our rest in thee Israel straight and consolation hope of all the earth thou art dear desire of every nation joy of every longing heart and what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, and nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Jesus, your name is beautiful to us. Your name is hope to us. Your name is peace for us. You are our counselor. You are our healing. You are mighty God. And we celebrate you and your presence with us through the power of the Holy Spirit this morning. And it is in that holy name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a seat. If you have a Bible, I invite you to turn to the book of John. We're going to be here a while in the book of John. Uh, what we're going to do, we did this a couple years ago with Luke, uh, but we're going to take John from Advent through Easter, okay? We're actually going to go the week after Easter because I wanted to. Um, and this whole book of John, whole book of John answers the question, what happens when God takes on flesh? And moves into your neighborhood. The word became flesh and dwelled among us. All right. And so I'm excited about this journey. Uh, I, we're calling this Jesus moved into the neighborhood. I'll tell you where I got that. Uh, it comes from the message translation of John 1.14. Uh, that, that Eugene Peterson, I love him, uh, and, and I miss Eugene's voice in our, in our lives, uh, but Eugene Peterson translates John 1.14 in the message translation, the word took on flesh, took on human skin, and moved into the neighborhood. And I thought, how perfect for a neighborhood church to think about Jesus moving into our neighborhood. And what would that look like? And how would that change us? And so we're going to let the gospel of John speak to us through this season of Advent all the way through the day, the week after Easter. All right? Uh, so let's start off at reading this kind of this majestic start that John brings. Uh, we're going to read verses 1 through 5 today. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God at the beginning. And all things were created through Him. And apart from Him, not one thing was created that has been created. In Him was life. And that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and yet the darkness did not nor cannot overcome it. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Would you join me in prayer? Our God, open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, 
open our hearts to receive a word from you. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and redeemer. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. I'll never forget, as a seven-year-old boy, my father had put in a, rented a VHS. Some of you kids are looking around like, what is a VHS? What is, what is this thing? And I'll never forget hearing for the first time Darth Vader's theme song. Y'all are singing it in your head right now, aren't you? And I remember as a seven-year-old boy that theme song sending chills up my spine. And every time that Darth Vader appeared on screen, guess what happened? Here comes his theme song. Here's a little nerdy movie fact. This is, this is free for parties. Are y'all ready for this? Star Wars was the first film to have theme songs for every one of its major characters. Yeah, that's how much of a nerd I am. I know. All right. But here's the thing. Anytime this character would appear on screen, you knew what was coming. If it's Darth Vader's theme, you know. And some kind of awesome lightsaber thing was going to happen. All right? I want you all to think about this. this. These five verses as the theme song for John's Jesus. And every time Jesus appears in the gospel of John, this theme song is coming along with it. All right? In fact, this was probably an early Christian hymn that John adapted to say, this is what Jesus is like, and this is the tone that I'm setting for the rest of this gospel. It's a theme song that appears when Jesus turns water into wine at the wedding of Cana. It's the theme song that appears when Jesus is talking to a woman at the well who happened to be the wrong race, happened to be the wrong type of woman, and happened to be at the wrong time of day. But it was to that woman that Jesus revealed that I am. It's the first time in the gospel that Jesus admitted it. He's the Savior. It's the theme song that appears when Jesus proclaims himself the light of the world at the Feast of Tabernacles in John chapter 8. Or when he's washing his disciples' feet, including Judas's. It's a theme song that appears when Jesus is on the cross and he says, it is finished. And this sets the tone for the whole gospel and God is singing this song over Jesus every time Jesus is on the page. In the beginning. Now, you hear in the beginning, what do you all think of? Probably Sound of Music. No, not Sound of Music. That's not what you're thinking of. You're thinking of Genesis 1, right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Do you think John did that on purpose? Absolutely, John did that on purpose. In the beginning. So what's he saying here? In the beginning was the what? The Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Now, that's kind of a strange thing. Now, there's, there's a philosophical uh, argument with the logos and all this kind of stuff with the word. I'm not going to get into that. But let's just think about what happened at creation in the Genesis 1 poem. What happened there? God did what? Spoke and something happened, right? God spoke and something happened. So maybe we could say this about the word. God's word, when God speaks, Action follows. And that action is usually a movement towards us. God speaks and action follows. 
This theme is seen in the Old Testament. At Psalm 107, verse 20, Psalm 107, verse 20, it says this, He sent his word and he healed them. He rescued them from the pit. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his faithful love and his wondrous works for all humanity. Over in Isaiah 55, this was read last week, but I'm going to read it again. For as heaven is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts your thoughts. For just as rain and snow fall from heaven and do not return there without saturating the earth and making it germinate and sprout and providing seed to sow and food to eat, so my word that comes from my mouth will not return empty. But it will accomplish what I please and will prosper in what I send it to do. So God's word, God's word is both spoken and there's an action that follows. Now there's a whole school of philosophy that kind of saw this idea of word of logos as a principle to live your life by. But what John is going to say is no, it's not a principle. It's a person. Let me introduce you to him. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Genesis 1, the climax of Genesis 1 is that God created human beings in his own image, male and female. He created them and he pronounced them what? Good and he blessed them. The climax of John 1, the kind of this prologue introduction here, and we're going to get to it next week more. The climax of that is that the word became flesh and dwelled among us. Now, why would the word have to become flesh and dwell among us? Well, because after human beings were created good, that means, that means human beings, just based on being human beings, are intrinsically valuable and intrinsically worth. Baby angel, you have intrinsic value and intrinsic worth, and we love you. But human beings has also been broken by something called sin. And every single one of us is affected by sin. And so God creates the world and he announces blessing and he announces good upon it. But his world rebelled against him. So what does God do? He sends his word as a person into the world to take on sin. He's moving toward us again. God is moving toward us again. In him was life. And that life was the light of all people. Y'all remember, what's the first thing that God created? It was light. God created light before he created the sun and the moon. (laughs) Where did that light come from? And it was that light that gave life to the world, right? Right? world caught in chaos, the world caught in darkness. And now that world was in chaos and darkness again because of sin. And so once again, God is sending his what? Light. To give life. His light to give life. And in in the darkness, could not overcome it. You see light kind of interwoven throughout John. There's this guy named Nicodemus. And he comes and meets to him at what? Nighttime. It was in the what? 
darkness. And here was Jesus being light in the night. Yeah, yeah, I liked that, didn't you? Jesus, of course, calls himself a couple times in the gospel the light of the world. And then after Jesus washes his disciples' feet, including Judas's, Judas's walks, this is how John presents it, Judas walks out of the light of the room into the darkness. That's pretty cool. The way that he presents that. Judas walked away from life. That's interesting. There's this God song. He's playing in the background. He's playing with us. And he's telling us, you can live your life in God's light. No matter where you're at, you can live your life man, in God's light. Because God's song, God's song, this, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. It's playing over you everywhere. I have an acquaintance named Angela uh, Garrell Williams. She teaches now at Truett Seminary, but she was at, at Yale. Um, and when she was at Yale, she was working on this project called the Joy Project. But while she was there, she also signed up uh, to do a women's prison Bible study. Uh, as you do. So he, she's teaching some of the top brilliant minds, young minds in the world at Yale, and then she steps into the prison system at night. Think about that kind of that, that contrast. And she talks about in her book, The Gravity of Joy, she talks about one of the women named Cheryl in her Bible study. They were giving gratitude and giving thanks one night uh, for just dif different things in their lives. And Cheryl mentioned she was grateful for her bunkmate because her bunkmate had found Jesus a few years earlier and had been reading and studying the Bible and Cheryl had never heard some of the stories told in the Bible and her bunkmate began to read to her and explain to her the words of life. And there was God's song right there in the darkness of that prison. And Cheryl's beginning to live in that light. No matter where you're at in life, man, you can live your life in God's light because God's song's playing all around you. Even when you're at Thanksgiving with family that you don't see all the time, God's song's playing all around you. Even when you're in a tough situation, Maybe financially, you're having some struggles. God's song is playing all around you. You can live in his light. Maybe some of you out there, maybe some of you out there are in a tough situation with your family. You don't know which way to turn, don't know how to act. Ask yourself, where is the light and how can I live in God's light in light of this situation? I mean, for some of you, you're struggling with a secret sin. Let that light expose it. It might be painful, but that light will give you life. God's song, this theme song, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God at creation. All things are created through him, and nothing that wasn't created was created by him. And in him was the life, and that life was the light of man. And the darkness can't overcome it. So no matter what you're facing, no matter what dark trial you may be walking down, that darkness can overcome the light that is within you. And you, you can live your life in light of God's light. One of the things I love about the history of our church is one of the, when we were put on the steeple, it talked about you wanted it to be in the center of the neighborhood, pointing people in prayer to God. 
no matter where you were coming from, you would see it and be reminded that there is light and that there is hope. Even from the beginning, our church has sought to be a campus of hope and good news and light. And do you know what our world needs more than ever? Hope and good news and light. They need community and to be around a community of people who are living their lives in what? In the light. Because the light shines in the darkness. In another gospel, Jesus said that you are the light of the world. And where do you get that light? From Jesus himself. So this week, this week, ask yourself, are you hearing God's song, that same theme song playing in the background, and are you living in God's light? Would you join me in prayer? Here in a moment, we're going to sing a hymn of response, and some of y'all need to respond to the the light of the Lord, but right now, every head bowed and every eyes closed, some of y'all in here, you're struggling uh, with something in your life, maybe a relationship, maybe a sin, uh, maybe, maybe something that you feel like there's some darkness in your soul. If that's you, nobody else is looking around, would you just look at me? I would love to pray for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. pray together. God, I know that in this room there are some of my brothers and sisters who are struggling. Maybe there's some anger that needs to be released. Maybe there's some sin that needs to be brought out into the, uh, out of the dark into the light. Maybe there's some tension in their lives that they need your wisdom on. God, I pray that for my brothers and sisters, that they would live in your light. They would hear your song singing over them. God, I thank you for this. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Maybe some of you here have never lived in the light. You need to receive Jesus as Lord. I'm going to invite you to come down, and I would love to pray with you and talk with you about that. Others of you in here need to be baptized or join this church. I, I want to invite you all to come down and, and, and join today. And still others, you need to pray. God's still working on you. It's okay. You can do that. However you need to respond, I pray that you do so as we stand and sing. So sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Sing one more verse together. How about? Oh, yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus. Just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus, simply take life and rest and joy and peace. 
Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. And I hope that you all have been blessed today. Please allow me to bless you and we'll be dismissed. May God bless you and keep you. May God cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God turn his countenance towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.